Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020, where during a recent live stream I decided to try out the Spirit of St. Louis, which was added by the 40th anniversary update. The Spirit of St. Louis was flown by Charles Lindbergh across the Atlantic, the first solo transatlantic flight, non-stop, obviously. And that flight is not one of the challenges they added as part of the 40th anniversary uh, update. They added this challenge, which was across the United States, which at least has better scenery. Uh, it is also shorter, 21 hours. It's a 21 hour flight uh, from San Diego to St. Louis and then St. Louis to New York. But I was not going to do that actual full flight. That's a lot. I decided that I would fly from San Diego to Las Vegas, which was manageable. I decided that I would not use any maps, no VFR map or anything like that, no external maps. I plotted out ahead of time and found that it would be a heading of 28 degrees and I estimated that the flight length would be two and a half hours and I sort of had a mental idea of where I would be at any given time and so I used that. Mainly I was just trying to hit the Colorado River and then go north up the Colorado River and I knew basically my way around after that. For the rest of this video, I'll present the original audio of this little adventure that we had. And of course, that means that I'll be interacting with the live stream audience, but I think you'll get the gist of it just fine. And yeah, so obviously an edited version of my, what ended up being about a three hour flight. Okay. Well, we're not gonna go with that route. All right, well, why don't we just try to get airborne first? Sounds pretty normal, the engine. Weirdly normal engine. I don't think I've got like a full load of fuel or anything. Um, gosh, that compass. Okay, so we need to turn around. But uh, which side is the... Oh, I'm really zooming this way. We gotta stay in the cockpit and fly like this because I want to sort of simulate flying in the Spirit of St. Louis, which is tough. Okay, uh, well, I'm not gonna complete the bush trip. <laughs> I just want you to know that game. We're gonna be relying on landmarks. I don't have any external map or anything. But, you know, the reason why we don't have a forward view is because there's a fuel tank in front. Some of the ships need work. <laughs> Some of the ships seem to be underwater. Okay, well, compass says that's approximately 20... 28. I don't know what that Pioneer compass is supposed to do. Note that, because we can't see out the front, this is basically our attitude indicator. That's like the nav ball. 110 miles an hour. Basically went 100. That's how it went. I forget if there's a highway between San Diego. We're just going by heading. And then I'm hoping that I'll hit the Colorado River and I'll recognize it. <laughs> there aren't too many rivers in the middle of the desert after all plate down on your numpad. Look at this. This is a very steampunk, really. Inductor compass knob. I think we set that. And then it'll tell us... Holy... It keeps this rotating a lot. How am I supposed to use this? <laughs> I think I... I hope I didn't mess up my own compass. No, I think it's that pioneer compass up there. But somehow we set it, and then it'll tell us whether to go left or right to hold course. Uh, well, let me try something. Okay, yeah, that, I think that's how it works. Like, uh, if we set the zero to the heading that we want to go to, that up here, that'll be in alignment with this. And then it'll tell us whether to go left or right based on that this pioneer compass indicator up here oh yeah I mean there's uh, there's little markings I think he's keeping track of hours or something I don't know it's got a clock there too which is handy 
chart of compass something well they clearly took a photo of that but it had been all you know when it was fresh it probably was readable <laughs> it would be helpful to have it readable head out the window well I mean uh, you just use your attitude indicator make sure you line up first we'll see Fortunately, we have, well, the thing is, back in the day, they had airfields, so it's like, it's not like you have to line up for a runway or anything. Just don't kill anybody. I think, uh, for Lindbergh, there were, like, crowds around the airfield, so you could just make sure that you see crowd to your left and crowd to your right, and then assume that you're not gonna kill anybody. So, uh, the challenge, though, that they have with the 40th Anniversary Edition is actually, he first flew across the United States. And he went from San Diego to St. Louis and then St. Louis to uh, New York. So, in two legs, he crossed the United States and set a record time of 21 hours. <laughs> the actual crossing of the Atlantic took 33 hours. The plane goes 100 knots. Uh, or actually, I think it was, I forget it was 100 knots or 100 miles an hour, but we're going more than 100 miles an hour, so I'm going to assume it was just 100 knots stable. He flew it continuously for 33 hours across the Atlantic. He had five sandwiches. I forget if he finished the sandwiches, but he had five of them. It is a very stable plane the way it is. In uh, Flight Sim 2004, it wasn't nearly this stable, so I don't know. I don't recall him packing coffee. I forget if what he packed other, other than the sandwiches. Um, as you might expect, I mean, peeing would be a little bit hard. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he hydrated beforehand. Now the scenario gave us a kind one knot wind as we saw from the start so they didn't want to throw us off too much like that. I don't recall him using some sort of device to pee like the astronauts did, but who knows. I mean if he has to go, he has to go, right? <laughs> Trapdoor pee hole in Ford? It could have been, but it doesn't look like it. And I'm sure it is a very accurate replica. Mind you, uh, if he wanted to, he could have done that, because for a lot of the flight, he was flying about 10 feet above the water. Okay, so now I've got a bit of a problem, in that I definitely see hills in front of me. So, I'm gonna wiggle to see the scope of the hills. Oh, this thing, this thing, oh, yeah. Th that's the periscope. Now I remember. <laughs> oh, that's real helpful, I'm sure. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I see a hill right there. <laughs> I'm not too sure if it's really working right. Gosh. One of the views? Yeah, let's see. Well, that's view one, view two, view three, view four, view five. Oh, gosh, I don't want that view. Uh, seven, eight, nine, zero. Back to the front. I'm surprised there's not more propeller torque. I didn't have to trim out for the propeller at all. Okay, well, we've climbed quite a bit. Let me go down a bit. I had set a... I had plotted it out and it showed a heading of 28 knots. Uh, sorry, sorry, 28 degrees. So that's what... I uh, keep deviating from that, but... It looks like you can get this Pioneer compass at the top to tell you whether to go left or right by tuning the right heading on that dial. Now for the flight across the Atlantic, every hour he retuned that dial one degree because there's sort of an arc you have to go in, right? There's a great circle arc. So he'd start off like at 60 some degrees when going out of New York and then end up going 90-odd or about 100 degrees by the time you get to Paris. 
So every hour, we would tune it like that. I, I've always been somewhat interested. If I actually had the time and fortitude of recreating the flight across the Atlantic, I would. But 33 hours is a tough thing to block out. <laughs> Sandwich. Oh, oh. Here we go. Um, dear pilot, for your long journey, I have thought of everything. Five sandwiches. One boiled eggs, uh, two roast beef, and two ham. No corned beef, apparently. May the winds be favorable to you until Paris. Bon appetit. Jimmy Blumish. Well, what, what are... The, okay, anyway. I didn't realize it was so empty in the back, actually. I thought there was... Uh, I, I guess that's a fuel tank there, but I thought there was more tankage. This way a lot more. Again, I deviated to the left. It's always to the left. So, I'm actually going to reset it. Since we always seem to go left, I'm going to aim a little bit further south. Which is fine, the Colorado River is, you know, south of Los Angeles. I'm oh, sorry, Las Vegas. Well, I guess since there's some hills, I'll keep the periscope out. That's the fuel pressure, not the fuel quantity. I guess for fuel quantity, we just have to hope. <laughs> there should be a hash mark in the periscope to say this is like level. <laughs> Do I have to like, I mean, should I consider this like what my four view is or down here to the periscope? I don't know. But the terrain definitely looks high. If I go too far north, I'm gonna smack into Mount Whitney. <laughs> if I go too far south, we'll be in Mexico. So, to some extent, there are certain bounds. Can't go too far off. In other words, either we're going to smack into Mount Whitney, we're going to end up in Mexico, or I'm going to meet the Colorado River. <laughs> One of these things has to happen. Yeah, I haven't figured out exactly what kind of mixture it needs. Yeah, there's definitely wind now. It didn't start the scenario with wind, but we definitely have wind now. Well, that desert is more like the stuff I was expecting. If I wanted to cheat, another way of doing it is to bring up the ATC menu and see what the closest airports are. I'm deliberately not doing that, but even without a map, you know, you can say not a map and still bring up the ATC and see who you can communicate with and whichever airport you're closest to that'll tell you exactly where you are. Bit too north? I don't know, we'll see. I'm I'm going uh, I'm going more sixty ish, seventy degrees right now to compensate for some of the turns I've made. To avoid the mountains and everything. So we're going a little bit further south than the original twenty eight degrees that I was supposed to. Which is fine, because, like I said, the Colorado River goes south, so... And once we hit it, we'll hit it, we'll know. It's tough to miss it. Well, we'll see. There's a... I think there's a lake up ahead. I'm definitely heading too far south, though. I'm just trying to avoid these mountains, but... The only actual big lake I know of around here is the Salton Sea. That's big enough that I would say it probably is a Salton Sea. That's the only thing I know of that would be that big around here. And we're at about the time where we would be going across it, so... The worst is at night, though. But it's not like there are any landmarks over the Atlantic to look at. I think probably the upper view here was supposed to help with uh, navigation via stars. And on the Rutan Voyager flight, which is like nine days, that was a flight, continuous flight around the world non-stop. They navigated by the stars as well. This is just because there's no other visual thing to follow. I always 
that's another thing I would like to do is navigate by the stars in Flight Sim, but I've never done that before. I get the feeling that they didn't... No, well, I don't know. I feel like it should have been harder to take off with it with full fuel tanks, but I'm not sure. It was pretty easy to take off with this. Yeah, I still think we gotta clear it. Whoa, whoa, uh, the, I guess there's some ridge lift around here. No, there's no, uh, specific landmarks right now. Oh, there's some green over there. Uh, that's a, that's a mine. That's solar panels over there. Unless I'm mistaken. Could be fields, but I'm, I would bet in the middle of the desert that that's solar panels. But anyway, I'm expecting like an hour's worth of desert still, so... Uh, I want... The south is okay. I don't... What I don't want to be is too far north. Because there aren't... Too many... If I'm too far north of Vegas, it's just like lots and lots of Nevada. <laughs> It's like, I'm, I might not notice that I've gone too far, but as long as I'm a little bit further south, I'll probably be able to tell. There is a certain lack of landmarks at this point. And, I mean, there is there is a road there. It's not as bad as the Atlantic, but... Well, there once were some serious river things going on there. Or at the oasis. Okay. Well, anyway, we should hit the Colorado River at some point. Doesn't matter where. Wherever we hit the Colorado River, I turn left. <laughs> so it's easy. A310. Yeah, and it's nice that any build has those tutorials on YouTube for it. I'll take a look at those and try and learn it. But I'm not much of an airliner person. I'm an experimental pilot. I, I like. I like the planes that there's only like one or three of, personally, but... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a go, too. Yeah, well, definitely want to avoid that bit. It'd be great having flown for two hours and then smack into the side of a mountain, right? Oh, that doesn't make me look... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't make me happy right there. Okay. Oh, uh, they're just like this around here. I guess. Oh. I don't like these tall peaks right next to me. Oh. I'm pulling up because it makes me nervous. I look forward already. There's some blue there. Uh, and the horizon. That looks like a Colorado River to me. Or it could just be a lake of some kind, but there aren't too many around here. And we're about two hours in. Almost two hours in. Then again, we've been going slower than I thought we would. Yeah, I'm assuming you can't actually get mirages in Flight Sim. That'd be fancy, though, if they somehow managed that one. This is a serious landscape. Look at this and wonder if something impacted here, because it, it looks like it's making rings here. I have not landed the Spirit of St. Louis, so it is entirely possible that after this long flight, I won't actually be able to land it properly. We're still probably pretty well loaded with fuel, too. I think this isn't too far away from where London Bridge was, right? I recall a lake like this in a town like that. 
on the Colorado River, and that's basically where they put the London Bridge. Well, there's a bridge there, all right, but uh, I don't know if that's the one. Interesting thought. Oh, uh, that's that's looking mighty enough for it to be a Colorado River. I'll go with that. Yeah, I'm following the river. I'm, I just want to keep it in my left window. And again, I wonder how dry this lake is now. No, definitely getting into more populated areas at least. See out the periscope. No, not a whole lot going on in front. Where is the river going anyway? Now there's a lake there. There's a runway there too. I don't know. Why do we have a lakeish sort of thing here? Doesn't seem right. Well, there's supposed to be two dams on the Colorado River. I was not informed of this. Gosh, I mean, if. If it is a second dam, then we must be really far south of the Hoover Dam. We're just following the Colorado River up now. I know my way. Uh, we know how to get to uh, Las Vegas from here. It is now very clearly the Colorado River. We're uh, on the border between Nevada and Arizona. 33 hours. Yeah, probably more the way I fly. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if we'd even make it with the fuel because... Like, it's not, I don't have any fuel gauge. Wouldn't it be sad if I made it to hour 31 and I didn't, I lost fuel and ended up splashing down in the Atlantic? You gotta think about that. But there's, I don't think there's any, uh, there's an oil gauge, but I don't think there's any fuel gauge or fuel flow indicator here. Now I can get one on an external thing, but I don't know if that's fair or not. That's actually fuel pressure. Pounds per square inch. So that's pressure, but that's not flow rate. It doesn't respond to my throttle at all, really. Uh, that's a mountain. <laughs> let's, let's go to the side. Our main challenge has been, like, avoiding crashing into the side of mountains today. Oh jeez. Um, let's go over to the side this side a little bit more. <laughs> Those mountains they just creep up on you. I can't see the river in front right now. It's probably tucked in in the middle and that's how the Hoover Dam is, right? It's in the middle of two two sort of walls of land. Pretty sure we see the lake over there. Ah, I see the bridge. I think I want to have the Hoover Dam on my right window. Trying to get a good view of the dam here with the bridge there. Uh, I'm getting jostled by some wind, that's for sure. Jenny? I, haven't, uh, I did not successfully fly to Jenny yet because there was too much lag yesterday. Well, there's the Hoover Dam. I, I, I will, I'll take, I'll, I'll try that mission next, maybe. I actually did, uh, flew the Jenny in Flight Sim 2004. Yeah, I've flown it in Flight Sim 2000, that same mission that they've added, I flew in Flight Sim 2004, but I did not survive that. I think I got smashed against some mountains in Flight Sim 2004 when I tried that mission. So I think we just follow the west bank of this. And we should see Las Vegas to our left. But it's really glary. Oh, I see the strip now. Uh, those, those are just little ponds. Those shiny things are just water. Ah, that glare. Yeah, I, I see the buildings over there now. Ah, there are the buildings. 
in the periscope, I mean. Now, the whole landing thing. <laughs> That's got to be interesting. And I don't think I need to stay in the cockpit right now. Let's uh, get the flight along the strip out here. I wish I didn't have the instruments. 67% fuel. I don't know what we started out with. I sure hope... I guess we'd have to fly long distance at much higher altitude to reduce the fuel flow. Because uh, we only got like 250, maybe 300, between 250 and 300 nautical miles. And we used a third of our tank, so... But we were flying as low as possible. The reason the instruments are up is because this was a challenge flight. We were supposed to fly to St. Louis, but or St. Louis, I forget how it's preferred. But there's the airport too. Uh, but the that would take like 12, probably more hours. Well, this one flies really easy. It wasn't that easy to fly in flight sim 2004, but. It flies rather easy around here. I'll tell you that. Well, this is the best we've got now. Then, Flight Sim 2004, it wasn't easy. But then again, it was also really bad weather when we took off in Flight Sim 2004. So, I think that was how the scenario was set up. I think I'll land on one. I always r land on the other runways. I'll land one of these on runway 19, left or right. Well, we won't do a full tour. Just swing around here. Grand Vacations. A little bit messed up on this side. Actually, let's do that legitimately. I should line up the runway and do all that business in here. So we'll try and figure out how to land properly from inside the cockpit without any other aids. Actually, I could do this very easily right now. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm very heavy though, still. I'm carrying most of the fuel. I can see through the periscopey thing, but not very well. Oh, I'm, I'm off to the left, uh, right, sorry. Other left. Uh, I'm too far off to the right. <laughs> oh well. supposed to use the left line on the runway as a guy, not the center line. Oh well. With plenty of room to spare too. But I, I technically landed on the right side of it and sort of, and sort of ruddered my way over. But that's because I didn't line up ahead of time. I just did it impromptu. I should. I was planning. I was thinking, okay, I'll line up and you know I'll do a few passes and do a traffic pattern and everything. But then I saw the runway, and I went, well, it's right there, and it's been a long flight. Wrong. Yeah, it's wrong way. Whatever. 
<laughs> Shh. Anyway. So, so I decided, oh heck, let's just go for it. So there you have it. That was my first adventure in the Spirit of St. Louis in this version of Flight Sim. Uh, about a three hour flight. And I was quite worn out after that. And yeah, it's a fairly easy plane to fly, as I had said. Uh, it seems easier than I was expecting. But still, it would be quite a challenge to do any of the flights that this plane actually did. So. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.